Hi everybody, I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. This one is a energy parasites, archons, alien implant removal. And we can explore literally anything in the session related to darker influences, psychic attack influences. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and read what the goals are and, and then we're gonna see what's going on, okay? So it says, um, I'm so in fear. Can you please, Abby, help me out with Ari, my friend from the other side? I am begging you, can you bring me the message as fast as possible? My heart, someone is attacking me. I'm so in fear. I'm crying on the floor and I have no power anymore and I can't sleep. Please help me out with Ari as fast as possible. Okay. Hmm. Just give me a moment here. I know it's very scary to go through psychic attack experience. And so I'm just adding up, connecting all the dots here. So you have a spirit friend named Ari. And there's something interconnected between you and Ari that's creating this. I, I'm just thinking for myself, but I'm going to go ahead and go in and we'll just see what's happening, okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and relax. I'm glad you reached out to me. There's a lot I can do to help you with this experience. So I'm going to relax. Okay. I feel as though I'm just a tiny little spot and I'm just floating in the ethers. And it's almost like being seaweed on the ocean, but just a uh, tiny little spot just floating in the ethers of the universe. And it's extremely quiet. And there's this massive, massive, massive orb here. And it's huge. It's like the size of a planet in, cons in comparison to the size of a mosquito. It's very huge. And this tiny little dot that's floating in the ethers is actually a reflection of you right now. And this giant orb thing... Well, I need to get you back into the giant orb thing. That's all I know for right now. <laughs> all right, let's see here. And this... There's something about this orb that is a reflection of you and a reflection of something else. I'm still investigating this. And there's quite a shield around it. So even for me to take you and put you back in here is not easy to do because I got to break the shield down. Okay. And I'm surprised that something about this whole thing is surprising because there's, there's definitely an echo here about how bright you are. And Brightness is the most terrifying thing to any type of psychic attack experience because it's trying to challenge you and to snuff out your light, right? And it has no power over light unless you succumb to it. It's like the rock, paper, scissors phenomenon. So does the rock beat the paper? If you're the paper, you have the power to cover the rock, right? You can win this thing. But for some reason, it's saying that it's more powerful than you, and it's just the rock is. Or you could see that it manipulated you into allowing it to be the paper now, and you be the rock. The thing is, is you've got so much beautiful light, and it's so strange to see so much beautiful light, just sort of like the seaweed in the ethers of the universe, and this. So, still don't know about this airy yet, okay? But we'll get there. All right, this is quite a block. I mean, this orb thing is very hard as a rock. It's very hard as a rock. And it's extremely manipulative, for sure. And it's not a nice thing. We already know this, but th that I'm picking up on all this in my own point of view. <sighs> it's 
just a moment. I'm just standing here and I'm looking at it. There's literally nothing else I need to know. There's no inspirations yet coming to the surface on what I need to do. But all I have to do is just simply stand here. And the intention is this little tiny thing is going to be put back where this little tiny thing goes. And then we're going to expand it because it's so much brighter than this. And then you're going to go away. So I just stand here and then I just emanate that plant. And as I emanate that plan, I just take steps closer and closer, and then I'm just walking into this. It has to do with your heart as well. You were mentioning your heart. Your heart hurts. And this, uh, this rock layer, I mean, it's, it's like bulletproof glass more than rock, but it, it also has the texture of rock. But it's wrapped around your heart. And... I'm actually in within your heart right now, so I'm through that barrier, but I've also grabbed you and you're here with me, so I have you back inside your heart, but there's repair work I gotta do. I mean, this could take some time here. So within your heart, and you just look like a tiny little flea, this rock is still there, so I'm just working on breaking it down, but it seems to want to just get tighter and tighter and tighter. And I tell it that it needs to just relax because everything's going to be okay. And I give it a mouth and I give it a mind. This is the barrier. And I give it feelings. I give it more consciousness, and I give it the ability to understand itself. And it just keeps weeping and weeping and weeping. And this is, I mean, somehow you did this. Is this from somewhere else or is this a part of you? Something that you're working through within yourself that just got out of hand? It just keeps weeping and weeping and weeping, but it is relaxing more from around your heart. And it doesn't want to be this way. It didn't mean to do this. It didn't mean to hurt you. And you're so confused. The little flea is so confused by this. And you're a bit stunned and in shock. And you don't know whether to believe this layer, this bulletproof glass or not. But I tell you, the flea, that yes, you actually can believe it. <sighs> because I can feel the genuine energy. It doesn't know what to do about itself because it still feels as though it needs to be there it's almost like the arm feels that it needs to be attached the eyeball feels that it belongs here the tongue has got to be in there you know and so this uh, outer core th around your heart it feels as though it needs to be there like this is the natural place for it to be but it's uh, also weeping and weeping and feeling quite confused about its own identity and not exactly sure what it is, why it is, but doesn't, I mean, it's very confused within itself. It is trying to make sense. It's simply trying to make sense. You're also in a state of being stunned. Still, you're not, not able to process anything that's happening thus far. And I tell the little flea version of you that I want you to see that what's happened here to your heart was an innocent event. It may not, you may not have perceived it that way, but believe it or not, there is something quite innocent about what has taken place here. And for me to tell you this is going to help you to bring the light back into yourself because you're a really bright person and your brightness is, has healing quality and component to it. And it could help this, it could help this heal. So I'm telling you that it's an innocent th 
event so that way you don't feel the fear anymore because fear can fuel uh, the problem and it grows out of control and it could be distorted in what its true reality or true nature is actually all about and we can get lost then in the fear so when we feel a sense of safety and security we're safe to become ourself again and we're safe to work with our own light again the world doesn't necessarily teach us how powerful that we are as we are it, we always feel that we're in the defensive and you know trying to shield out the corruption and the corruption is more powerful than the good people of the world kind of thing so we feel that way with spirit realm or energy based stuff too but the light and the love is so ridiculously powerful anything that is fear based that comes to you is actually trying to reconcile itself and you to heal it and set it free and so this here again is it has something to do it's this is an innocent thing okay we're still i'm still making sense of it me talking to you uh, your deeper consciousness about this and because there's no such thing as time so you from the future watching this session um, it's already you're already starting to glow this tiny little flea is already starting to expand and you're sharing your energy with this barrier that that developed around the heart now this may have something more to do with airy so let's just keep moving forward and see what happens next okay You are brighter, but you feel a bit um, smaller emo in emotion and strength, but there's a humility about it, and it's not necessarily weakness as though humbleness, more humble, like you would bow down to your queen kind of thing, but you love your queen, you adore your queen, your queen is... is your breath, your life, and it's total respect and adoration of woman, okay? Total respect, adoration of woman. And so your humility is expressed here as you, you're bowing down, and it's, it's actually genuine. I don't define this as weakness. I define this as sincerity, but allowing your energy to be reduced in honor of uh, showcasing an essence that you revere. And there's a lot of love going on here. This still is not entirely resolved yet, okay? So when, when I examine it in this way, this uh, barrier around the heart, it's, it's like a ice that has no cold sensation to it. It could be like a really pretty looking plastic, but it's hard as a rock. I mean, it's like diamond, uh, but it looks like icicle, but it is not cold. And it stands as a queen, but there's also love uh, being generated as well. But there's confusion going on here from the female side. It's, there's a total imbalanced communication. This icicle is actually a consciousness that is reflecting divine feminine, okay? And she stands kind of like a geisha, is that what they call? Um, the uh, Asian woman with the white face and the hair and uh, sort of pulled back. Uh, she stands like like this uh, emanation and she has a pretty green uh, floral type um, garb on she's very beautiful she's uh, very beautiful and there's something that uh, I feel an honor and reverence towards her myself and she is the echo coming from what was surround your heart, okay? So we're going to bring an understanding and balance this whole thing. It's not your typical psychic attack scenario, okay? Okay. She tells me that she's trapped and her spirit can it cannot be set free. So she's showing me something along the lines of, we could call her airy. Let's just do that because that would be the best way that I could define this. Okay, so I see her in this structure, all right? It looks like the icicle 
It stands upright. It has a flat base. It's really pretty looking, but it's not cold by any means. And it's as if her spirit is trapped within it. So let's say we have a Japanese doll, okay? And the Japanese doll has a spirit within itself. That's a part of the culture that dolls have spirits. So there's something along the lines of her spirit is trapped inside of a structure and is needing help being set free. That's all I know thus far. Let me continue to examine this. So you're continuing to share humility and respect by bowing before her. And she's stuck. <laughs> There's nothing that she can do to even hug you or tell you how much she appreciates all that you share with her. She's basically a statue, but she, she just emanates like she's just locked inside of a crystal or something. So she's just sort of trying to get your attention, but you can't seem to figure this out. And there's a developing frustration that I feel inside of herself. And it's almost loud enough that it creates a, a explosive moment. And the energy just disperses itself. It's not really her nature. It's just a, com it's just a compilation of, of scenarios compiling together to create a moment. If you get poked enough, you might you might react, right? <laughs> it's not as if she's being poked. She's really trying to get your attention because she needs help. Okay, she's showing me this is getting more and more and more frustrating as you're continuing to share love and humility, which is absolutely received and on the level that she would hope that she would receive it. But she's standing here as a statue, receiving, receiving. She can't share anything in return. She doesn't get to share anything in return. But she also feels like she's stuck and she can't do anything. So it's almost like you're throwing it in her face constantly. Love, 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 love. And she is starting to create an aggravation or an irritation because she really just wants you to help her. And you don't realize that she's needing your help and this way and maybe you are realizing it maybe you are sensing it but there seems to be a cataclysmic event that has taken place and that's why you're in this experience it does still feel very innocent that's why i don't want to define this on a way that it was like she got mad or something because i don't feel that i just feel like it's an entirely innocent situation but we need to un unravel it a little bit more Okay, I'm just relaxing everything down. I don't need her to show me any more of her side of the story. I feel like I get it. I'm just relaxing everything down. And the next thing I'm asked to do, which is by her personally, is to have you stand on your feet. And when you do stand up, you're about the size of a little plastic G.I. Joe her little, little soldier from back in the day. And she's huge. She's enormous. She's an enormous figure. And you're still like black. You're still a black doubt um, shadow outline. And she desperately, desperately wants you to stop doing this. Stop doing this. Stop doing this. You're not an inch tall supporter, <laughs> appreciator of me. I, I want you to see me eye to eye. I want you to respect yourself. And now by respecting yourself, you respect me because she wants you to start standing in your true power, in your true nature, not as the servant, but as the king, so to speak. So if you were to honor her as the queen, and it's very much so like honoring Mother God or uh, Divine Feminine in a very loving manner, but it's uh, on a level where change is being asked of you to start to stand up and to see yourself as the Divine Masculine, as the king, but not with ego, because I don't see you as somebody who has ego, but with self-respect, self-honor. Allowing her to now appreciate you in the same way. 
but freely, where you're both animated, the same balanced uh, connection. I still feel as though she's stuck somehow. Okay. All of this conversation is, it's like peanut brittle, but it keeps growing peanut brittle type stuck feelings all over. And it's like draping spider webs, but draping peanut brittle energy. And it's not easy to just break it. And it feels like things are getting stuck in it too. All right, it's again moving into a, a tumultuous frequency of frustrating energy that's coming from her end. And she says that it would be on the level of you're fighting for your life to breathe and you you're being forced to suffocate and you're you're now flailing your arms and reacting in order to breathe and that's a part of how she's reacting here and you're feeling it okay i'm just going to totally cut ties between you and her because i'm just i'm just going to do that i you need to just get away from her energy it's, she needs to go reconcile something over there. She's not evil at all. She's not, she's not a scary person. She's not an evil person. She's not doing this out of any reason other than she's got something going on. It's like a girl, it's like breaking, it's like the girl is trying to tell you something and you're not figuring it out and you keep doing it the wrong way. And she keeps trying to tell you, keeps trying to tell you, keeps trying to tell you and you're not figuring it out. So then she freaks out. <laughs> that's kind of what this is like okay and I'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible because I'm telling you it's entirely innocent and she still loves and adores you but at this point I'm just breaking this apart and you we're just gonna separate you both that's a, that's the only thing I could think to do right now that's gonna bring a much better balance than what we're looking at I can figure out area uh, later but let's let's figure out you first I, I just, I'm telling her I'm cracking the both of you apart and it's for both of your own goods and I know she knows this. She's starting to show me that she's trapped inside of a jade stone. And when I break this place apart, it's two jade stones. That was once one stone where you and her were together in the same stone and now I've bro broken it apart to separate you both. But she's still trapped inside the stone and in a way you too are trapped inside the stone. But this is all good. I'm telling you, this is actually feeling better. This whole thing needs to break down. This is an unhealthy love as well. Clearing your mind and everything related to your memory of her spirit in order to bring you back to yourself again. There's a lot more about your history and it's all sort of coming into a big bang, right, all of a sudden. So your souls have more history than what's happening right now. This is feeling a lot better. It's just bringing you back into yourself and completely removing everything having to do with her. And now that everything, we're removing everything having to do with her, you're starting to feel better, but there's a sickness energy that's lingering here. And it's starting to be felt by her. And it's getting louder and louder and louder. You could, to, you could think of the twin flame phenomenon where, where it feels as though the love is, is bright, but it could burn, you know? So there's an unbalanced love going on here. All right. This is getting better, but we're not there yet. You're now trying to figure out what everything that's just happened. You're trying to make sense of all of it in your heart. You're trying to, you're wondering, your, your mind is going like crazy right now. And your heart is now covered in a jade stone. 
And she's getting angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier. And the anger is starting to turn into a black cloud with lightning bolts. And it's still her just trying to tell you something. And you have to completely let go of her energy. Because even now, the more you're thinking about or trying to make sense of this, you're holding on to her. So is she trapped? If she's stuck inside of a crystal or inside of an object, or she's stuck inside of you, and you're not letting her go. So that's another, another side of what we're looking at. It takes time and a lot of clues to unravel the stories here. But we're getting there layer by layer, and you'll start to notice you're able to breathe again. No wonder your heart hurts. <sighs> okay, I'm telling this part of you. I want you to say, Ari, I understand the most healthy relationship that we can have together is by separating. And when you make this choice, I, I feel a release of her energy from your heart just going back to her. And at first she was so angry because you've been imprisoning her somehow, some way. And now it's all starting to calm down. It's all starting to calm down. She needs a long time to reconcile what that was about. And you need to stop thinking about her so she can actually process this in her own world, in her own way. And there's a lot of rotten holes, like an apple that get eaten by a worm. And it's there's a lot of rotten holes going on here. Things that need to be deeply explored and understood that would make sense as to why this calamity happened. <sighs> so what's going on right now is you're still processing and reacting and trying to make sense of. So you're kind of turning into a stone but it's a clear stone. It's kind of like the icicle, but now you inside of it without any frozenness. It's just like you're in a pretty piece of plastic. And now she is animated on the outside, but she's a lot of energy and she's a lot of information and her energy is kind of combustible because there's some unreconciled stuff going on there. And the, the understanding of it is not translating between the two worlds, between your human experience and where she's at and your soul timelines together. And now you're doing this to yourself. Now you're imprisoning yourself over her. When she's just trying to tell you she needs space. So now you're imprisoning yourself and now she has to suffer because you feel bad. And she doesn't want that either. So she, so she's trapped, you've trapped her soul without realizing it totally an innocent scenario here. I'm telling you this is totally an innocent scenario. You had no idea this was happening. And because this is so shocking, it's going to take time to process it. But do as much, do as little thinking of her as possible because that's, that's also trapping her soul. I'm going to explain this as people fall in love with their pets. A pet dies and they can't live without that pet. So they actually hold on to their soul. So the pet can't go to heaven, so to speak. So I see ghost pets hanging around and they're not free because the owner won't let them go. And so you need to totally let her go. Your soul's crying a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of crying and confusion. And I tell you that you need to welcome other friends, other beautiful beings of love that you are familiar with that are supportive of you and welcome them to help you nurture you through this. Because those relationships are 
balanced and understandable and and we're meeting eye to eye where this connection has definite value and meaning to your soul but it got way out of balance and then this reaction takes place and now it's confusing and etc so just even you could write the name airy on a piece of paper and have a little mini ceremony and say thank you for all that you've taught me um, any imbalances between our souls i'm sorry um, and I know it's really not something I need to apologize for because I'm simply human and I don't always understand every little detail. Now you just place it into a little candle or a little fire and you just let it go. And now she's set free. Um, she's showing me through an echo the Japanese doll. And then uh, you burn the doll to set the soul free, something of this nature. So uh, she's showing me that you can set her soul free. She wants to be set free. Hmm. You're getting it. You're a little bit still stuck and trying to make sense, but you're not in a severe state. That makes it still vulnerable. I can see you moving on from this experience quite quickly. Your energy field feels a lot better. And the awareness and understanding is going to help. Don't take, don't, don't have hard feelings about this at all. You don't have to. And it was just simply an experience. Don't try to make sense of it. This isn't something you, you'd be able to make sense of between the human world and the infinite spirit realm with all of its nooks and crannies, you know? Just focus on those that, that you know you are seeing eye to eye and you feel the balance of love and keep allowing that love to guide you to the next experience. And that's it, okay? You're gonna be totally fine. You're gonna be absolutely fine. I already, my heart is so bright and so warm. This is the real you. You're super bright and super warm. You're so sweet. You're a really kind person and just continue to be you weird stuff happens sometimes so don't take it too hard okay <laughs> it's like feels really great so i'm just circulating the energy of your heart and it feels really good on my heart and i'm just circulating it around and now we can all feel better right <laughs> okay i'm just disconnecting from your energy field mm. Thank you for this very special experience to help you and for your open-mindedness to share. It's a very vulnerable thing to go through. It's a very vulnerable thing. And it's interesting because experiences like this, they aren't always as dark and as evil as we might think they are. And there's always a deeper understanding beneath the surface. And I would say this was actually kind of a, a more beautiful psychic attack scenario, even though it can also be very hard to. But there's a lot more love in it than you may have known. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Thank you again. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Hope you all have a great day.